Good morning, church. Do you know that God loves you? Do you really know that God loves you? Do you? Because He does. Good to see you this morning. And it's exciting to be alive today. Do you know why? Because it's exciting. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Do you remember on Mother's Day when I said to you, God made me to love me? Do you remember that? That's why I asked you early on, do you know that God loves you? A lot of us, when we hear about the love of God, you may say to me, oh yes, God loves me. But in your day-to-day life, you don't know that. Do you know what I'm talking about? As I was lying in bed last night, and I was talking to Daddy about his love, I came to the conclusion that, as I said in... um, on Mother's Day, it's just about everything that we need in life, this is the heart of it. Who can quote the vision of this church? The vision, the vision of this church. Somebody just yell it out. Real relationship now. Real, not plastic, relationship now, with God, with people. Now, a vision, it's something that's in the future. It's not yet realized, but we are going there. So, did you know that this church, and I want to say welcome to our growing church, because I can see something in the future. And how we're going to get there is real relationship now, with God first and foremost, and then with people. The reason why I ask you, do you know that God loves you, is that you cannot pass on what you don't have. Did you hear me? You cannot pass on what you do not possess. You have to have something in order to give something. And that's something that I want to focus on this morning is daddy's love. That's how you get your prayers answered. Now there are about 10 slides on this prepared message, which I may or may not touch on it. But I really want you to grab hold of daddy's love for you personally. So I'm going to ask again, Alistair, do you know that Jesus loves you? Fantastic. Darwin, do you know that Jesus loves you? And what about you, Jill? Do you know that Jesus loves you? Amen. Amen. I want you to go home today and look in a mirror and tell yourself that God loves me. In John 17 is where Jesus is praying to God the Father. And did you know, while he was talking to God the Father, he mentioned something quite profound. It really touched my heart, which is why we are going there this morning. He was praying away, talking to God the Father. And in verse, um, let's say from verse 17 on, where he said, he said to God the Father, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. <clears throat> and for their sakes, I sanctify myself. That they also may be sanctified by the truth. 
I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Now, I don't know if you follow what I've just read. In those verses 17 to verse 23, Jesus was specifically talking about you and me. Did you pick that up? He was praying for you and me. Now, the verse that really, really did like a flip-flop in my heart is the very last verse I just wrote, I just read, and the last part. Let me read again that verse 23. I in them and you and me that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and here are the words, and have loved them as you have loved me. Do you know what that means? Jesus, I mean, God the Father, loves you exactly the same way he loves Jesus. I'm going to say that again. Jesus, God the Son, is loved by God the Father 24-7, exactly the same measure of love, height of love, breadth, depth of love as he loves you. Now, do you believe that? Do you really, really believe that? As you're sitting there and you're thinking about your life, do you believe with all your heart that God Almighty loves you the same measure as he loves Jesus. Now, we all know that God the Father loves Jesus, don't we? But did you know that he loves you the same, exactly the same way, same measure, in every possible way you can imagine as Jesus? That's very profound, my friend. You see, the answers to your prayers comes out of relationship. It's not head knowledge. It will never be head knowledge. You can know your Bible inside out, but if you don't know daddy in here, in your heart, it's a waste of time. It's just knowledgeable, that's all. But if you don't know how daddy's love helps your marriage, helps your children, helps your finances, helps your planning for the future, helps your health, useless. That is love. That is love. He loves you and I exactly the same measure as Jesus. As Jesus. As Jesus. He really does. He loves you the same measure as Jesus. Now, right now, some of you, uh, maybe there are memories. There might be objections already in your heart, <laughs> which is why we need to talk about this. That say, oh, no, 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 he loves me, but. He loves me, but. And there are lots of buts lining up. And this revelation this morning will kick all those butts and get them out of the way. Because 
Daddy has made you for a purpose on this earth, and that purpose is the reason why you're breathing. Very important to know this. The word of encouragement that I sent out on, I think it was Friday, it said you must know the why before you know the what and when and how and so forth. Number one that I come to understand, the number one purpose that you must really fix in your heart is that Daddy loves you. God the Father loves you, regardless. And that's, that's the one that you have really have to get into here, get into your heart. Jesus says over here, look at the wording, as you have loved them, as you, Daddy, have loved me. This is Jesus speaking. He said, Daddy, you have loved them. Because he was talking about the disciples uh, in front of him, and he was also talking about you. Isn't it interesting that the love is in a past tense, which means that he has loved you from conception now to your last breath. It's a done deal. But you see, you and I have to experientially walk in that. You must walk in daddy's love because that's where security comes from. That's where solid 100% faith comes from. The answer to this question, by the way, is faith. But this faith here <clears throat> is actually, it's from love. Okay? I'll just put them up there just for, for you. But it's about love. What is faith? How to get faith? And how to use faith? The answer is no daddy's love. No daddy's love for you personally. Know it. Just know it. And if you don't know it, ask him. I remember a time when I say, said to God, I love you, daddy. And I really know, I really long to know the meaning of the words I've just spoken. I really want to know what does love you means. I want to say I love you with all my heart, but what do I mean by those words? Can you please, Holy Spirit, um, give me a download from heaven. Can I have a taste of what loving you means? I mean, the great commandment that Jesus summed up the whole Old Testament from Matthew 22, 37 to 39. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. You know that one? I said, Daddy, I'm supposed to love you, but I think I need to know the other way around first. I want to taste what your love tastes like, feel like, when I think about you. What does that look like? What does it feel like? And thankfully, he answered me. And we have some wonderful conversations from time to time. And I have to say that nothing beats his love. You see, when you know that daddy loves you, come what it may, regardless, come what it may, daddy said to you and I, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, it's easy to remember those kind of verses if you know his love. But if you don't know his love, it's very easy to forget those words. But when you have his love rumbling in here and in your spirit 24-7, it's very easy. Oh yeah, he is with me. Jesus himself said, Matthew 28, Behold, I shall be with you until the very end of the age. Didn't he say? Matthew 28, verse 20. I will be with you until the very end of the age. You see, when I said come what it may, is that things will hit you. 
because we have an enemy. His name is Satan. He roams around like a roaring lion. And we are on his top list to destroy. We are. Now, unfortunately, a lot of Christians, they focus solely on Satan, on how to conquer him and how to beat him, but they don't know that is love. They spend a lot of energy chasing demons and protect themselves, make sure that Satan doesn't come and get them, but they don't know that is love. Did you know that if you know that is love, that a roaring lion is a toothless Roaring lion. He has absolutely nothing. Jesus says, here comes the rule of this world. He has nothing over me. And so do his children. You and I can say the same thing. Here comes the, the lion. He can roar all he wants. He cannot touch me. Why? Because daddy loves me. The same way as he loves Jesus. The same way he loves Jesus. I see it the same way he loves Jesus. And I want to challenge and encourage you this morning to experience the love of Daddy, to go from your head to your heart, to your spirit. You must experience his love. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I've come to the conclusion that miracles are awesome. However, did you know that there is something higher than miracles? Did you know? What can be higher than miracles? I mean, God's miracles are Awesome. What can be higher and more profound than miracles? Do you know what it is? Somebody have a guess? God's love. Nearly there. Blessings. Blessings. I used to look for miracles until I discovered that by the definition of miracles, I'm always in trouble and God has to save me. Of, he was running from one fire to the next. He has to perform a miracle because miracles, that's what miracles are. God has to step in. And then I thought, oh, what would it be like to actually walk in that miraculous realm all the time? And the answer was blessings. Read out, read up, <laughs> should I say, Deuteronomy 28. And you will see the long list, verses 1 to verse 14. I am the head and not the tail. I am always above and never beneath. I am blessed in the country and blessed in the city. When the enemy comes against me, it shall take off in seven directions. And here's my own um, modern translation on the next part. Our kitchen always has enough supplies. It never runs slow for any guest, for anybody that comes our way. It says that the nations shall call me blessed. I will only give, but I don't borrow. Those are blessings. Now, if you walk in that kind of blessings, those kind of blessings, what more do you want? You don't need any miracles. You're walking in the miracles. How do you get there? That is love. That's how you walk in the blessings. That is love. If there is one focus that I want for St. James and all the people that are yet to come to this, to this place is know that is love. Because real relationship now is based on that is love. It's based on daddy's love. Over and over and over and over. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not 
seen. Substance. It has substance. I reach into my pocket and I've got some eclipse. It has substance. This thing has substance. So does that is love in here. It has substance. It holds me, directs me. It helps me to dream dreams and see visions. But you know, the thing that I love about Daddy's love, Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? That's a rhetorical question. It's a rhetorical question. Whom shall I fear? The answer is no one. Why? That is love. And if you were to use that verse 1, the Lord, if you look up in your Bibles, it's spelled with capital letters. This is Yahweh, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, CEO of the universe, if you want to modernize it. He is my, I'm related to him. We are related. Light. We are related. He is my light. Did you know that you can walk into a dark room and you flick the switch and instantly darkness leaves? Have you noticed that? So when darkness tries to come and attack me, guess what? Daddy can see it for miles. He can spot it for miles. Which means that long before they come anywhere near me, they are already spotted. If you think of the implication of those words, God Almighty is my, my, Call it my light. My light. Yes, he is my light. <laughs> Nothing is hidden. Daddy sees a whole lot long before they get anywhere near. He sees a whole lot. Lord is my light and my salvation. See, he saves me. He saved me. He saves me. He will save me. Verse 2 says, When the wicked came to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Do you see how powerful the light is? Do you see how powerful daddy is? When the wicked came, came against me to eat up my flesh, I can only think of cancer whenever I hear the word eat up my flesh. But listen to what happens to the wicked when it comes to, to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Fell. They stumbled and fell. And you see the implication of daddy's love? And you read your scriptures and you can see the scriptures witnessing to you and give you that confidence. Give you that solid foundation. Daddy loves me. He is my light. He's shining wherever I go. Come what it may, they will stumble, they will fall. Awesome, isn't it? Some four or five weeks ago now, I think, some told me about a homeless woman who was sleeping just beside the fence out there. I was away in a conference, and so I thought this was on Friday when I was 
made known of this homeless woman. And I thought, yeah, I must go and see her. So on Monday, I went and saw her. Now, I'm just defying to how that is love and, and this light works. While I was talking to this woman, this homeless woman, Daddy, because my antenna I usually up, you see, I picked up something kind, kind of awkward and weird about this homeless woman. When I, I quoted the scripture, she finished it for me. But when she finished the scripture for me, I kind of thought, that's not her speaking. And what went through my mind is Jesus and his temptation. Satan knows the Bible. So I went home and I said, Daddy, what was that all about? There's something not right about this woman. And Daddy says, she's not homeless. Oh no, she's being sent with an assignment to pray against your church. Now, how awesome is daddy? You see, when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. So I said, okay, daddy, what are we going to do about it? And he said, go back tomorrow and talk to her about Jesus and his blood. Then watch what happens. So I was so excited. In fact, I was so excited that I couldn't wait. And I started bleeding the blood over here while I was still at home. So I said, no, I mentioned her name. May the blood of Jesus be upon you. And I don't know if you remember on that very night, there was a very heavy downpour. Really, really heavy, like deluge. Bang. And Daddy said, I have flushed her out. I have flushed her out. She's gone. But she needs to hear what you, you have to say to her. So I came on Tuesday morning. She was sitting right down there, and just against one of the windows. And when she saw me walking towards her, she said, I don't want to talk. That's what she said. I don't want to talk. And I said, why not? No, no, I just don't want to talk. You see, daddy is spirit. And you are spirit too. And that's the realm we are supposed to be living in, by the way. We are primarily born again spirits with a soul living in this body. Spirit with a soul, which means emotions and feelings, volition, will, living in this body. So I said to her, why not? And she said, well, I just don't want to talk. And then I said, so I mentioned her name, and I said, did you know that Jesus died for you and his blood? Well, I didn't even get to the blood. And she said, no, 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 I'm out of here. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear anything. And I said to her, who sent you? And she said, none of your business. Ah, bingo. There we go. She was indeed sent. When the wicked came against me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. That was about the fourth or the fifth woman that's been sent to this church since I've been here. Isn't daddy good? He catches them every time. (laughs) He catches them every time. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? No one. No one. Did you know that if you have an assignment from daddy to do on this earth, nothing will ever cut short that assignment until you're finished. But the foundation is his love. Because First John 4, 4 says what? God is Love. God is love.
You cannot give away what you don't have. Real relationship now with daddy and then with one another. A lot of us try to love people out of our own capacity. And all is going well until they offend you and then your love goes out the window. You see, our human capacity and love and so forth is very limited, very shallow. It depends on circumstances. If he scratches my back, great. But if he knocks me on the head, I have to knock him back on the head. That's how we work, isn't it? We are human beings. But when daddy's love grabs hold of your heart, it doesn't really matter what Satan does. You are covered. Now, what daddy said to me last night was, teach my people the as is and the good be. The as is and the good be. Because you are listening to me now as you are. But I'm talking about your future. I'm talking about the, the good be for you. We all have to start from somewhere. Now, maybe what I'm describing to you about how daddy flushed out this woman that was sent on assignment, and she left, of course, praise the Lord. And you said, oh, I wish I can do that. Why do you can? Yes, you can. But start from where you are. Joke to daddy today. In fact, you can use that 17, that, that uh, verse um, 17, verse 23, and say, Father, did you really mean those words? And meditate on it. Did you really mean that you love me as much as you love Jesus? Is it the same kind of love? And have a conversation with him and see what he says. You will be surprised. You will be surprised. Sarah was 21 last weekend, our baby of the family. Incredible time. But about Thursday night, she came down with like a cold, flu kind of thing. And I got home, I don't know where I was, and Sandra said to me, you better go and see your daughter. She can hardly breathe. And she was. She was sitting in the shower, had the shower going. She could hardly breathe. When you carry daddy in here, piece of cake. Nothing ever throws you. And this is what I'm trying to pass on to you. There are lots of things that when they come your way, we all panic and so forth. And then, so I walked in there, and straight away I knew that asthmatic thingy is a spirit. I'm trying to bring my daughter down before her birthday. How dare this demon trying to meddle with my children. So I lay hands on her. She was coughing and spluttering as they came out. And I said, yeah, all of you, out, one by one. Just come out and leave my daughter alone. Just come out in Jesus' name. And if, by the way, if you speak in tongues and you're not speaking in tongues, what a waste. Please start using your tongues because I switch into my tongues really fast. And sometimes I just switch to them. And as I was speaking to tongues, more and more and more coming out. And then I said, now breathe normally. Lungs be filled in Jesus' name. Within two minutes, I walked, I walked out. Within a minute or two, she walked out perfectly well. Could breathe. You see, walking in the blessings is awesome. Walking in the light is awesome. But what beats them all is walking in daddy's love. 
Oh, daddy's love is just so full, so comforting, so certain. It delivers every time. Every time. So, as is and the good be. As is and the good be. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit says to you, you can do the same thing. Because the same Holy Spirit who is within me that has done all those things I've just told you is also in you. You just have to receive him. How do you receive him? Believe. Believes he loves you. Never mind what happened 20 years ago, 50 years ago. Never mind. Believe he loves you. Now, when you allow his love to come inside of you, he will do several things. One of the things that he will do, he will let you forgive those whom you cannot forgive. And this is what he said to me last night. One of the blockages for my children, why they can't experience me, is they can't forgive. You have been so hurt, so trembled under, that you cannot release that person. And Daddy says this morning, sing that song from the, that movie. Let it go, let it go. You know, the one, you know what I mean? Let it go. Lovely singing voice of that lady there, by the way. Let it go. Let it go. I will help you pray the forgiving prayer at the end of this service. But secondly, some have let go, but they cannot forgive themselves. And that too is a problem. You must forgive yourself. It is not your fault. It was that blimmin' roaring lion, that blimmin' devil. Because whenever you have those moments where the past flashes through your memory and you have the sensations and emotions and the feelings of the past, that is not daddy. I can tell you that now. That is not daddy. That's the enemy banging you on the head, pulling you down. But you see, daddy's word says, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the spirit of God in Christ Jesus has made me free from the spirit of sin and death. That's powerful, my friend. Forgive yourself. Let it go. Forgive yourself. You can easily say, I forgot the name of uh, someone way, way back during Aristotle's day. The devil made me do it. You can use that line. The devil made me do it. Because most of the time, that's actually what happens. Maybe you were powerless at the time. So it wasn't your fault. Maybe, and so it wasn't your fault. It's the devil. And now you say, Jesus, because you forgave me on the cross, I'm going to forgive myself. And forgiveness, Daddy says, is one of the most powerful tools that and the door that will open up this love business for you. That will open up the door. Then you can walk through it. And once you walk through it, what you will discover is that when those instances, those videos, those past memories come to you. Yes, they come. Minus one thing. 
no more emotions attached. You are truly forgiven. That's how you know whether you are forgiven or not. No more emotions involved. It's the emotions that lead you, that lead you down to the pity party. It's the emotions. So we are digging very deep this morning to find out why daddy's love is not coming through easily. And this is one of the areas. Couples forgive one another. Husbands and wives forgive one another. Let the strife go. James 3 verse 16, read it up. James 3.16 says, where there is strife and contention, there is all manner of evil. Where there is strife and contention, there is all manner of evil work. Evil work. So you're trying to have a breakthrough, but there is evil work everywhere. Where is the door? Forgiveness. You must forgive your spouse. Forgive one another so that there is no strife. There is no strife. We are talking about the practical ways to walk into daddy's love. Forgive your spouse. Now men, it's not Father's Day yet. But did you know First Peter says, if you do not forgive your wife, your prayers will not be answered. <laughs> and I'm speaking from experience. No matter how godly you are, if you do not forgive, you feel like some, as if something is just plucked into you and sucked that power out. You try to pray, but there's nothing there. You see, because Daddy's Word, this Bible here, is always true. If it says that your prayers will not be, be heard, it will not be heard. If it says that, but if you forgive and let go, you'll be blessed, then you'll be blessed. You see, it, it goes both ways. Aren't you glad that you got what you needed to hear? Because from this point onwards, my friends, Daddy said last night that some of you, and I pray all of you, will go from the miraculous to the blessings in your daily lives. Where you say, come what it may, I'm ready. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Answer is no one. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. When an army come against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. I asked David once, what is this, this thing that you're confident about, David? And he answered, one thing I have desired of the Lord. I said, what was that, David? What was this one thing that you have desired of the Lord? That he answered, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And while he is in the house of the Lord, he, he wants two things. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Awesome, isn't that? To inquire in his temple. Verse 5 says, For in a day of trouble, and there are days of trouble, he shall hide me in his 
pavilion. He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall place me high upon a rock. The word of God is so awesome, my friends. Just because the door has been opened, the door of love. I said in that word of encouragement, I want to finish on this. I said, plan for the best, not for the worst. The reason why I said to plan for the best is because, it's because God is the best. Now you have an enemy that comes after you, but your daddy in heaven has already called the shots 2,000 years ago through Jesus Christ. And he opened the road. He opened the way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He opened it. And he's saying to you, now walk with me. Come with me. And I will show you. So brothers and sisters, I'm going to pray a prayer of forgiveness if any of you struggles in that area. After that, I'm also going to pray futuristically for, for you to find your way out of where you are, the as is, and send you forward to the, the could be. Because you deserve more than where you are now. All right? You deserve more than what you are now. As a child of God, that is. You're not meant to live in where you are now. You can go much, much further. So let's pray. Daddy, I thank you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our big brother, our best friend, our savior. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so, so much, brother Jesus. For nailing to the cross the handwriting that accuses us again and again and again and again. We choose today, Jesus, to agree with you and let that handwriting be yours, no longer ours. For you have forgiven us. You have set us free. There is now no condemnation in everyone who is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, Lord Jesus, you read our minds. You know the very people we're about to pray for. First of all, Lord Jesus, we want to say sorry. Sorry for holding these grudges over the years. And I admit, so this is where you go personally now, in your heart. I admit I was wrong for holding these grudges. And today I want to put it right. I want to set the record straight from your perspective. So, name the person that has hurt you in your heart. We don't have to shout it out. Name the person in your heart. You may even whisper under your breath. But it's important to name the person. So, I'm going to choose a person as an example, just making up a person. And this is how you pray for that person. So, for example, if this person's name is Marcus, this is what you're going to say to Marcus. Marcus, you have hurt me deeply. You have deeply wounded me. But Marcus, today, this morning, right at this time, this very second, 
Marcus, I want to say to you, I am not your judge. No, no, no. Jesus is the judge. The judge for you and the judge for me. And because of that, Marcus, I release you into the hands of Jesus by saying this, Marcus, with all the faith that I have right at this moment, I forgive you. I forgive you, Marcus. I release you into Jesus' hands and I forgive you with all the faith that I have. Now, Marcus, yes, it hurts, but all those things you did to me today, they no longer belong to me. I call them finished. They do not impact my life anymore. Marcus, I release you into Jesus' hands. I forgive you and I bless you. Yes, you heard me right, Marcus. I bless you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of Jesus, Marcus. I really do. And I pray, Marcus, now if Marcus is still alive, this is what I would say, I pray, Marcus, that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that the Lord will bless you beyond your wildest imaginations, Marcus. May the Lord bless you so, so much that it will be a difference between day and night. I bless you, Marcus. Now, if Marcus happens to be your best friend, for example, your spouse, you can then say, Marcus, and with the love of Jesus, I love you. With the love of Jesus, I love you, Marcus. I love you, Marcus. Now it's time to talk to God. Father God, I've done it. I meant those words I've just spoken. And I thank you in advance for opening the door so that now, Daddy, I want your love to come into my heart. Because right now, before you, before the angels, and before the witnesses that the book of Hebrews speak about, I want to declare that I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Yes, I do. I forgive myself in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Daddy, I receive your love. Daddy, I receive your love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping me to fulfill the assignment and the mission you gave me to do in this world. From this point onwards, Daddy, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I will finish the assignment. Yes, I will. Thank you, Daddy. Now, please put your hands upon your heart, all of you. I'm going to pray a special blessing upon you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I now command Holy Spirit to let your anointing fill these hands right now in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing fill, 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 fill to overflow. Thank you, Daddy. Fill to overflow in Jesus' name. Break every yoke that is not of God. Break them, break them, break them. And bring freedom where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. Let this scripture be fulfilled in these hands right now. 
In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you for fulfilling your word. Thank you, Daddy. Don't be scared. Some of you are experiencing something that maybe you haven't experienced ever before in your life. Don't be scared. Let it go. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you to overflow. Thank you, Daddy. Mm, thank you, Daddy. Yes, that's him. That's the Lord Jesus Christ giving you a big hug. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Big brother, Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our Savior. You are present in this place. Thank you. Thank you. I bless you, my brother and sister in Christ. I bless you. Now, Daddy, as their hands are on that heart, I also speak your peace, your joy, that's right, your patience, your goodness, your faithfulness, your kindness. Yes, the whole lot. Your self-control. Let it flow. Let the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Let them flow. Let them flow in these hearts. Thank you, Daddy. As light as a feather. Thank you, Daddy. Let it flow. Let them flow in Jesus' name. Let the healing, let deliverance, let the light of the Lord Jesus Christ burst open, burst open in these hearts right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, let deliverance flow. Let deliverance flow. Let deliverance flow in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Daddy. Let deliverance flow. Let freedom flow, especially in the mind area. Let deliverance flow and let every negative thought be kicked out of this place in Jesus' name. I bind you in Jesus' name. Negative thoughts, intellectual thoughts that do not belong to the kingdom of God, get out. Leave in Jesus' name. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So be set free, Son of God, daughter of God. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Be set free in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord a clap. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, and God's people said, Amen. And so be it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are a free man. You are a free woman. An assignment has just started and begun today. It's yours for good. Go for it. Go for it. No more holding back in Jesus' name. No more holding back. You are free indeed. In Jesus' name. Isn't that good? God is good. Amen.